Hi, I'm Justin Baldwin, and welcome to the podcast. Today, we have Amanda Duncan. She is absolutely an incredible person. So excited for you guys to hear from her. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Known her for a little while now, and I'm just going to tell you a little bit about her, and then she's going to hop in. So she started her first business, Simply Adorn 79, in August of 2018. It's a jewelry business that specializes in earrings and bracelets that are designed on graphic software, cut with a CO2 laser, then she hand dyes each piece and then assembles it to be worn. And she did all this with little to no business experience. Later, three and a half years later to be exact, they are in 50 retailers across the United States. Then the Selkie is Amanda's newest business venture in downtown Wilson. She started in January, 2021. Then she started it because she saw creative, talented people across the state and it inspired her to start this gift shop that features handmade, hand assembled merchandise as well as socially good and large scale manufacturing business items. She's born in Cary, North Carolina, but now she lives in Wilson with her husband and her four sons. She's also finishing up an associate's degree in mental health and then continues to work towards a graduate degree in developmental psychology. Can't wait for you guys to hear this episode. Absolutely incredible. Enjoy it. Here you go. Hey, Amanda, thank you for being here. How are you doing? Doing well. How are you, Justin? I am excellent. This heat is getting to me, but it's all right. You know, we'll make it through. Yes. <laughs> so we've known each other for a little bit now. Uh, I've been in your store quite a few times. It's freaking amazing. Um, but let's go back in time for a second. How did you get started? with all this? Um, so I kind of jumped into the world of um, self-employment in 2018. Um, August of 2018 is when I officially launched my um, leather jewelry business. Okay. Um, so I did that for a while and, you know, we, I think forever in time, um, you know, especially the generations impacted by COVID, we're all going to reference COVID. Um, you know, when COVID hit, obviously, you know, my jewelry business and my ability to go out and do markets and engage with customers, even though I had an e-commerce site, um, was severely impacted. Sure. Yeah. Um, and that that was incredibly hard. Um, I was in a new area. You know, I had just moved to Wilson right before everything shut down. Um, we had purchased the house in February and by March, everything oh, was, wow. <laughs> was shut down. So, um, you know, I was in a new place. I didn't really know anybody. And as we came out of, or started to come out of the pandemic, obviously we're still in it to a certain extent. Um, I wanted to find ways to engage in the Wilson community. Um, I also realized, uh, which I've shared with you know, quite a few people that I was running my jewelry business in a vacuum. Um, I think you're so hyper-focused on making your business successful that you don't make these powerful connections to other businesses mm. and people around you in the way that you should to help support what you're doing. Yeah. And I wanted to redirect myself and I obviously, you know, being in markets, I came across a lot of different creatives in North Carolina and you fall in love with everybody's process and their work. You know, it's just, it's yeah. really incredible. Even if it's something simple, it's just, wow. And you, you kind of influence each other to kind of keep finding new ways to create and engage, um, you know, people who are consumers and buying from you and, um, yeah. And so I, you know, I wanted to bring those types of individuals to Wilson and decided to open up, you know, a gift shop that's curated with a really interesting mix of North Carolina based businesses from across. Yeah. The um, and so that's how I am here. <laughs> yeah. I'm here now. So okay. I know some people that are really, they have this passion in whether it's painting or drawing and they don't really know other than like take pictures and 
put them on Instagram and hope someone sees them, how they can go about making their passion an actual way of making income and supporting themselves. Yeah, and that that is um, it's a conversation I've had quite a bit. Um, and I have had the good fortune of, I want to say it's probably around five or six businesses, or they weren't businesses when they walked through the door, um, talk to me, and I've been able to help them go through that process. Um, I think on, on that side of it, from my experience of starting up a jewelry business, um, and, and engaging in other gift shops and spaces that I wanted to carry my work, you have to be incredibly patient. Um, there is a learning curve that is very personal. Um, there are some basic business, business know-hows that are, are pretty standard across the board, you know, making sure you understand um, markup and profit margins and pricing your merchandise. Um, different platforms that are available to advertise your merchandise. Um, those are pretty, pretty standard. But, you know, when you're making something, it is a very personal relationship between you and what you're doing. Um, and it should be a very personal experience um, engaging in the community and getting your work out there. And it takes a little while to kind of figure that out. And, um, you know, when I say I launched my jewelry business in 2018, um, I had been working on product development for about seven or eight years. Wow. So, yeah, so it, it's, it's patience is definitely key. Um, I would also say there always seems to not be a, a space where all of the resources you need are at hand. Um, finding somebody you trust who is a good mentor to walk you through that process um, and help you kind of navigate through like the difficult areas, you know, um, and get you referred to the right people is great. Um, you know, there are pro um, programs available too. There's one that's really incredible here in Wilson called Riot, which is, you know, somebody who has started a business. Um, it walks you through six, I think it's 16 or 20 week program of how to uh, advertise, develop your product, marketing, wow. business management, and it's free. Um, you're a part of a cohort. Um, and there are some programs, I think Launch is another one that actually you don't even have to have like a registered business. It could just be a business idea. And they partner with community colleges, you know, to, to get you kind of set up for that. So wow. just finding people who can help you with that um, and, and not, not getting defeated. Yeah, <laughs> right. That's, that's a huge one. Um, take criticism, um, not to heart, but to mind and pay attention to what people are saying to you um, and don't get offended by opinions. I, at the end of the day, it's your business. You run it how you want to but you're gonna miss a lot of opportunities to enhance and move your business forward if you don't listen to critiques. Yeah. Um, love getting critiques. That's, that's something too I would obviously kind of <laughs> push, you know, when you're a <laughs> right. owner, like be, be receptive to what people are saying to you. On the flip side though, Going from a product development and you had your own product to now you have to source these all these different items. Talk about the biggest struggle with that now versus just having your product and selling it. And now you're having the source and everything else. What's probably the biggest issue that you're facing now? I definitely entered with um, <laughs> I was I was pretty naive. Um, you know, thinking that running the gift shop was going to be like having my jewelry business. It's not. It's, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> totally different. Totally right. different animal. Um, and, and really what it comes down to is there is a very stark difference between having an e-commerce type business where you don't have a brick and mortar. Mm. Um, that is a, a huge, huge difference. Um, and it, it comes with 
certain challenges as far as how you are able to manage your time. Um, all of a sudden you have a brick and mortar that you have to maintain, you have to fill, it has to look a certain way. Um, not only that, but you, if you are the only sole employee, you are tied to being in that business certain hours. So flexibility is not really there. Yeah. So, you know, it, it puts a time constraint on your day and your ability to accomplish things that you want to accomplish. Um, and I think, you know, particularly, you know, small businesses that are doing well, um, I'm, I'm at this point now, it's, you kind of get to a point where you're straddling a fence. Um, okay. There's not quite enough income coming in that you can hire help um, to kind of relieve the pressure. So I can sit and do the financial side of the business and do the ordering and manage the inventory better, um, focus on social media a little bit better. Yeah. Um, so you're spread really, really thin. Um, so much more so than, you know, a, a e-commerce type business. Yeah. Uh, and there, are, you know, I've got a little over a hundred businesses in here right now. And That's incredible. Yeah. It's, it's really amazing, but it's, you know, at the same time, it's, it's a lot to manage. Oh yeah. I don't doubt it. What do you think the biggest, um, the biggest thing you've learned throughout this process I could probably insert a million and one things here, but um, loving what you're doing mm. is, is the key because having a small business in any form um, is going to be one of the hardest things that anybody could ever do. Um, so make sure you love what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's something. That's good. Yeah. I'll stick with that one. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> I hear you. So what do you like most about what you do now? The, the community engagement part is incredible. Um, I absolutely love coming to work each day and not knowing who's going to walk through the door. Yeah. Um, you know, whether it's somebody from out of town that I'm going to develop a relationship with, somebody from out of state, somebody from out of country. Um, and also having regular customers who come in and somehow I, I'm a little carved out part of their world. You know, I know what their family's up to, you know, yeah. all the exciting news. And I can also be there, um, you know, on days that they're struggling and having mm -hmm. a hard time. Um, and that's not a written rule of small business, but it's one that you, it's a role you have. Yeah. Um, any brick and mortar, um, to a certain extent, you are going to be like a, a community oversight person. You, you're going gotcha. to get to see that cross section of the, the people who are around you and be able to be a part of their lives and see the temperature of emotions and how things are going. Um, and I do, I love, that's, that's my favorite part. I love, wow. I, I love all the, the merchandise. And well, stuff. yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But, yeah. Absolutely. But it, it's meant to be, I think if, if you are approaching small business and um, I don't want to say in an appropriate way, because there are all different ways to approach small business. But um, if you look at it as a service, that you're providing to a community, um, it's really incredible. What does the word service mean to you? I guess in respect to my business, um, it's how I am able to provide um, some type of benefit to the community. Um, and the way that I have found that I am able to do that, I mean, obviously I try to be a very inclusive gift shop, um, I want this to be a safe space for people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I have no no pressure um, on anybody. You know, when they come in to purchase, that's yeah. not my philosophy at all. Um, I've you know even during COVID, I had a standing arrangement with nurses who were on their breaks. They would come in. I could look at them, and I knew, and I just. I didn't even say hi or anything. I just let them walk around and be in a quiet space. That's not where they were working. Yeah. So, you know, I think 
that and as far as pulling in merchandise. Um, I want to provide merchandise from businesses in North Carolina because obviously I want to support in the state. Um, keeping things localized, um, even if it's a, a, a state setting, you know, money staying in communities. And yeah. that, that's a big deal. Um, you know, I don't think people understand, you know, when you're involved in supporting local, you're keeping money in programming and nonprofits and, um, you know, in city and tax, you know, government, all that kind of stuff. It, it's yeah. all kind of interconnected to each other. And it makes our state stronger. It makes, you know, the community stronger financially. Um, so obviously, you know, that was a big part of it. And, you know, the other part is I want there to be merchandise in here that is accessible. Um, art accessibility is a huge thing for me. Everybody wants something handmade. Um, yeah. It has a different feel um, than, you know, mass produced products. Um, and it has a different meaning. I think when, you know, when you get a gift that's handmade, the person who gave it to you, you obviously know that that person thought out that process and Absolutely. That done with intention. Um, but a lot of times those handmade items can be very expensive. And so I work really hard to find artists who are along the same vein as I am with my jewelry business. Um, it's handmade, it's quality, um, but it's also affordable and yeah. they're accessible. Um, so that's, I think I answered your question. <laughs> yeah, no, you did. You I'm did. not sure. Absolutely. Did I just talk in a circle? <laughs> no, yeah, no. That was great. That was awesome. If um, if you had to start over, you know, for whatever reason, boom, immediate restart, what would you do differently? That to me is an interesting question because um, I, I think I don't I don't think that I would want to start over. Um, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, because I, I think no matter, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. You know, sure. it's just one of those things. You're not ever going to get it right. Um, and I enjoyed the path that I've been on. And I, I'm one of those people, I'm okay with not judging myself and being okay. I'm definitely okay making mistakes. Yeah to me, you know, making a mistake or, you know, I don't like using the word fail, but, you know, if I fail at something, to me, it's not, you know, there's not that kind of um, itchy desire that if, if I had known this, you know, I'd go back and do it differently, you know, this way. Right. Um, to me, those are opportunities for course correction. Um, and I, I'm okay doing that. So I don't know that I would do anything differently. I'm, you know, I'm happy where I'm at right now. It's not perfect, but yeah. yeah. So I don't, I don't know that I'd go back, Justin. <laughs> no, no, absolutely. How, do, how would someone, what advice would you give somebody how they, because that's a very, very rare trait, being completely okay, well, not okay, but being able to deal with failure and the perspective to see it as a learning opportunity versus beating myself up. How, how did you go about developing that? And what advice would you give to someone else? Because that's huge, not only in life, but obviously in business. Well, I think a lot of it is understanding that there, there's, there's a separation, right? Um, who you are as a person is not completely and utterly tied to the things that happen to you in life. Um, or the choices that you make. Um, if everybody knew how to do everything perfectly the first go round, um, we would be an amazing species. You know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> we, All right. We would be incredible. Um, I think a lot of it is just training yourself, and it takes time. And for me, it took a lot of time. It's training yourself to be okay with failing because we're not taught that. Um, right. That's not something that, you know, parents seek out to teach their children. 
um, is that, you know, you need to be okay with failing. It's no, you have to get it right. You have to win the first time. Um, and that's not success. That is not success at all. Um, and it, it'll take a while, but I think every time, you know, there, there's a hang up or something doesn't go quite right. It, it's not a roadblock. It's, it's a detour to something that might be better. Mm. So if you look at it also from a standpoint of optimism that, okay, this didn't work out. I haven't failed. Let me figure out another way of doing something and get yourself to a point that's better than where you were. Otherwise you're stuck. Wow. You know, everything that you're doing is going to stay in the same spot. I mean, you're spinning your wheels in wet mud. I mean, that's, yeah. that's, no, for real. that's yeah. not really, it, it takes practice. Um, I can't say that I'm a hundred percent at it all the time. You know, I can be pretty self-defeating at times, but, right. um, but I think, you know, hit rock bottom and give yourself a good push off and just go at it again. And, Absolutely. and love failing. Yeah. Love failing. That's all you have to do. And I felt like I just got done like at a gigantic conference, motivational speaker. And I was like, yeah, let's go. That's no. so good. <laughs> so good. <laughs> that was so good. <laughs> um, what's the best advice you've ever been given? I was actually thinking about that um, the other day. One of the issues with small business is that your 24 hour roommate upstairs is always on the clock. Um, when you're running a small business, I wake up in the middle of the night thinking about my business. Yeah. Um, you're never off the clock. Um, so when I was opening the gift shop, a, a friend of mine who was one of the first gift shop owners to carry my jewelry. Um, you know, I was talking to her and, and she's like, okay, so I'm going to give you a piece of advice. Do not set your hours to totally serve your customers. Like do it without um, putting yourself in a situation where you have no time to breathe and enjoy your family. Um, she's like, you're, you're never going to make everybody happy. So make sure that, you know, as a small business owner, you're, pre you're protecting yourself too, um, so that you're not on the clock all the time. And, yeah. you know, I don't have standard retail hours. I'm not open at 10 or 11. I don't stay open till eight or nine at night. I have two boys of my own. Um, you know, my husband has two boys. We have a large family and I'm very close with both of my children. And, um, I want to see them. <laughs> right. Yeah, for sure. Like everybody else, I want to see my children. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think that honestly was like the, the best advice I got, like, you know, approach business in a way that's practical and makes sense. You know, you want to be accessible. You want to have open hours where customers can get to you. Um, but at the same time, don't be beholding to, you know, the business that you've created make sure yeah. that you're protecting yourself and your family. Um, and that that's really made a, a positive impact on how I kind of structure my time. Yeah, absolutely. Now, how important is family to you? Because of even whenever before this interview, when we're talking, you've referenced your kids multiple times, your everybody in your family it seems to be huge. So how important is that to you? And how do you think that plays in? as a business owner? Um, you know, family, I come from a very large family. Um, so I grew up, you know, going to family functions just about you know, every Sunday, you know, with 60 relatives. I mean, it's, it's a massive family. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, and my relationship with my boys is pretty incredible. Um, and it, it, came out of a very difficult situation. You know, their, um, their father was not um, a very happy individual in our marriage. And it was a very challenging marriage. I'm um, a very abusive marriage. And when I left that marriage after 16 years, um, you know, it was me as a single mom raising two boys. And I was financially doing it pretty much all on my own. Um, you know, I had been 
managing everything that they were doing on my own anyway, but now I had no income. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and I had no way of really sourcing a job because I had no job history. And that was very difficult. Um, and so I was navigating the welfare system with two boys and that feels and is in a lot of ways, very humiliating. Um, and you have to get really creative and being able to not rely or depend on my children, but have them as emotional champions during that time, um, to acknowledge that what I was trying to do was really hard. Um, and you know, us all kind of investing in the emotional well-being of each other has made us a very tight group. Um, so much so that they love coming to the gift shop. They love being a part of the business. Um, you know, my older son, Cullen, is now 20 and he runs it on his own. I, you know, and it makes me feel good as a mother that I'm able to pass down um, practical knowledge to them you know, business knowledge, if they use it or don't use it, that's fine. But, you know, there's an opportunity for them to learn how to um, run and manage something on their own. And not only that, but also have important interactions with people that come in the gift shop that might be able to help them down the road, making yeah. those connections as well. Um, you know, and, and having a blended family is, is, challenging you know it's really hard because I'm you know remarried now my husband Jeff Bell is absolutely incredible um you know and I'm little insert here he just got uh, an amazing job you know working now as the director of the North Carolina Arts Council oh that's uh, so freaking awesome go over him yeah so now he's got you know the opportunity to have a statewide impact on art um you know and I think all of the successes that are had between the two of us are shared. Um, and that to me has been an incredible experience to have a partner um, who, you know, we don't, you know, as, as humans, you know, I think there's a, a social desire that is taught, you know, that we need to do everything in a vacuum. You know, I, I, I've said that already, but, you know, we're everything is is isolated. It's individualized. Um, you know, our wins and our successes are our own. Um, and when you have somebody who's your partner and all of a sudden the wins and successes on either side are a, a family affair, it makes them so much more powerful. Absolutely. Um, and so I think, you know, that has redefined family for me in a way I can't even verbalize. Yeah. Um, and, and it's it's incredible. And he's very supportive of my business, very engaged with it. Um, you know, we're, we're good at bouncing ideas off of each other. So, you know, when you have a very strong, tight knit family, you know, you can depend on each other to get you know, business advice and walk through difficult problems together. Um, so, yeah, you know, I think family and, and business, those two can go hand in hand very well. That was incredible. It's like we got a motivational speaker now. We got a parenting <laughs> conference going on. We got a family conference, marriage conference. I love it. Is there anything else that you'd like to share that I didn't think to ask you? If anything, um, you know, I, I grew up in downtown Cary, which is now a uh, major destination for people moving to North Carolina. Um, yeah. So I watched it grow um, my entire life. My parents still live downtown. Um, and it's, it's an incredible thing to see. And I, I think the only thing I would say is I would encourage your listeners to come explore downtown Wilson. Um, not as like a, a business promotion. You know, right, I'm not yeah. trying to market our advertiser, push somebody <laughs> to come shop. But, you know, Wilson to me is, you know, the, the park has really encouraged this um, flourishing of this really deep vein of art that was already in Wilson, you know, pre pre tobacco. You know, yeah. I, I think that art scene has been here a long, long time. Um, 
And having the park here now, the Whirly Gig Park, has encouraged other artists to come into the area. It's encouraged the art scene. And the vibe here is absolutely amazing. And I think coming in and getting to know the community as it is right now will make you appreciate what the community is going to be like mm. you know, two or three years down the road. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I think if you want to go explore anywhere in the state of North Carolina, um, you know, if you're in the Wilson community, but you haven't been downtown, um, I would definitely come in and get yourself engaged because it's, it's an amazing, yeah. yeah, it's an amazing community of, of business owners that are all very, very supportive of each other. And I've not experienced that either. Like there's no competitiveness at all. I mean, you know, I, somebody starts something or wants to do something, everybody else is high five and I'm like, yeah, sure. Tell me how I can help and be supportive. Let's make this happen. Yeah. And, um, it, it's just, it's an amazing space to be in right now. It is. And it's growing every day. I feel like there's something else coming. There's something else in this huge push to bring business and everything. It's an amazing place. So where can our listeners go to learn more about you, learn more about the business? And if they wanted to stop by as well, what's the address so they can definitely go check you out guys, because you have to, I'm telling you, it's incredible. They got some of the coolest things I've seen in my life are in this store. So where can they go for that? Yeah, so you can come visit me um, Tuesday through Friday, 12 to 630, um, and Saturday, 11 to 5, at 214 Goldsboro Street South in Wilson. Um, you can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Um, both of those handles are at the Selkie NC. Um, and Selkie is S-E-L-K-I-E. I, everybody calls it Selkie. I'm like, no, it's Selkie. <laughs> <laughs> There's a K, um, maybe, yeah. Yeah. So, um, and then my website is www.theselkiensee.com. So um, I try and have a lot of community events, um, and those are all posted there, workshops, art engagement, activities, um, you know, I have weavers come in and you can come in and talk to them, you know, cord basket makers. It, it's, it's, I try and make it um, as interesting as possible. Guys, go check her out. Hit up our Instagram or Facebook. Go stop in the store. Amanda, thank you so much for the opportunity. You're an amazing person. You have such an amazing story. Guys, if you enjoy this episode, make sure you follow. Make sure you subscribe. Share it with a friend. There's a lot of valuable information, even if it has nothing to do with business in this episode. Absolutely incredible. Thank you guys again. I'll see you next time.